Our first guest tonight has been an outspoken opponent of the Obama nuclear deal with Iran, calling it a gift to Iran's Ayatollah. Joining us tonight, Congressman Ron DeSantis, member of several key committees, including oversight, government reform, judiciary, and foreign affairs. He's also the leading Republican candidate for governor of Florida. Congressman, great to have you with us. It was a blockbuster moment for Prime Minister Netanyahu as he revealed uh, the inner workings of what he called and what the Iranians call Project Ahmad. Well, it was unbelievable presentation, Lou. I mean, what Netanyahu outlined, I think, is what a lot of people like me who've been critical of the deal have suspected for an awful long time, namely that Iran, prior to the deal, was actively pursuing nuclear weapons. And then even after the deal, of course, they got flush with $150 billion in sanctions relief. Obama even airlifted $1.7 billion in cold, hard cash to the mullahs. Uh, and yet they continued to seek nuclear weapons. And so this deal was bad when it was signed. It hasn't achieved what Obama promised. And I think the president would be 100 percent within his rights to pull us out of this deal and start to sanction and put more pressure on Iran. And that seems the direction in which we're headed, because the president has said from the outset, uh, effectively, uh, today, Netanyahu corroborated what he has said, uh, that the Iranians have uh, been, uh, at the very least, deceptive uh, throughout, and that it's the worst deal he has ever seen. Uh, no one can still, to this day, answer what in the world the United States got in this, in this bargain with uh, the Islamic Republic. Well, remember, too, uh, we tried to get at the time the secret side agreements between the IAEI mm -hmm. and Iran. And that was something that the Obama administration did not produce to Congress. I thought that was a sufficient reason to vote against the deal, even apart from all the Absolutely. other problems. You, you wonder why they kept that secret. I think the reason they did is because they knew uh, it would not be something that would be conducive to them forcing that deal. Remember, the Congress didn't actually vote for the deal. You just had this obscure corker provision, which allowed Schumer to filib uh, the Harry Reid to filibuster the deal. So a majority of the Congress was opposed to it. It just got caught up in a Senate filibuster, mm -hmm. and that's why the deal was able to stick. But I, that, those secret deals, had those been, I think, exposed, I think it probably would have been a voted down even with the filibuster. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to call it the Corker complicity. Uh, his role in that is, uh, to me, uh, shameful uh, and, and, frankly, uh, for both the country and for his party. But there's a lot of that to go around, as we all know, uh, in this deal, because there were just so many people so quiet in Congress and the Senate who knew better and still let it go forward. Uh, let's turn, if we may, Congressman, to, uh, to North Korea, uh, President, uh, South Korean President Moon saying President Trump deserves, if this deal is done between North Korea and, and South Korea, he deserves the Nobel uh, Peace Prize. Uh, I can't imagine you would dissent. If we denuclearize the Korean Peninsula, that'll be by far the greatest achievement since the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump will be the reason for that. Remember, all of his predecessors going back 25 years had the same approach. Pretend the problem doesn't exist. Don't really do anything about it. Hope it goes away. And to this president's credit, he came in. It would have been easier for him to just put his head in the sand. But he said, we are going to deal with this one way or another. And he brought an unprecedented level of pressure uh, on Kim Jong-un and the North Korea regime. And, oh, by the way, China, uh, which has been mm -hmm. beneficial. So we're still a ways to go to get to that point. But, boy, had we continued the Obama approach, there's no way we'd be sniffing any yeah. of this right now. So the president deserves a lot of credit already. And I'm hoping that uh, Kim Jong-un realizes he's met his match with Donald Trump and he's much better off uh, actually uh, doing a deal and, and getting rid of these nuclear weapons. And we are looking at a president who has an extraordinary uh, historical opportunity. At the same time, he is dealing with a building a new coalition in the Middle East, uh, the purpose of which is uh, ultimately to sustain a Middle East peace agreement uh, and at the same time uh, forestalling both China and Russia in their, uh, their aggressive hegemonic uh, uh, plans and strategies to, to dominate their regions. Uh, this president is succeeding on every level. And yet when I look at the Washington Post, as I do almost every day, but I do it, it I, I do sacrifice considerably 
in the pain that it uh, brings me, uh, to, to read about chaos in the White House instead of what is actually being achieved by this president. Uh, it is a truly remarkable period in American uh, geopolitical history. Now, look, they're, they're not going to give him credit. This is all pre-cooked narratives. They have their anti-Trump narrative set. But the fact of the matter is, you look at the successes. I think you know, those are big successes regardless. But just think of how big a mess this president inherited from Barack Obama. Yes, North Korea, Iran, ISIS caliphate, China on the move, Russia on the move, Syria in disarray. He inherited all of that. And so for a little more over a year, we've made a remarkable turnaround, and uh, I think he deserves credit. I'm not sure the Washington Post will ever give him credit, but I think that that shows their true colors rather than shows that they're yeah. uh, for the facts. You know, they've been uh, flying their uh, skull and crossbones of the deep state for quite some time. Uh, we, we don't have to worry about them striking those colors <laughs> or showing them for that matter. Congressman, great to have you with us as always. I want to ask you something very quickly. You're the leading candidate uh, for the governorship of Florida. You are taking all sorts of flack. Uh, you've got incoming every day. Uh, how does it feel to be the leader? Hey, they're shooting at you because they know you're a threat. And uh, a lot of the attacks are bogus, and people have done that. So people can go to rondesantis.com, sign up, and hear the truth. But, yeah, we're on the march, Lou.